Cellulite and Love Tarot. My name's Hillary, and I'm going to be doing an actual Day of Lion's Gate reading. Um, I did a almost predictive energy read a week ago, um, but, you know, energy is fluid and it changes constantly, so I felt the need to do a check-in for the actual day. I have been seeing 88 everywhere, all over the place, and... 22, a lot just happened. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. 8 and 2 together is 10. The completion. I was pre-shuffling my decks while doing a little meditation here. Um, and a lot of earth energy kept popping up. So the Hierophant popped up, which is Taurus. Um, but talks about beliefs and religion, you know, uh, it's just sort of what you're ingrained with believing, right? And then a lot of pentacles kept popping up. So I feel like a lot of this Lion Gate, Lion's Gate um, portal is focused a lot on actualizing some spiritual lessons, spiritual um, beliefs into existence so making things more tangible you know so with that being said I'm gonna clear for you and me I just saw one four three so I love you <laughs> clear for you and clear for me and I I already staged and everything but yeah I have a few crystals here that I chose for this reading as well some Lem Lemurian <laughs> quartz I did not say that right. <laughs> Dalmatian Stone Jasper, Leopard Skin Jasper, Red Quartz, and some Tiger's Eye. Um, yeah. I was just drawn to all of those specifically, and the Red Quartz stands out the most to me because it's also a very earthy stone, um, but with the the iron inclusions really, it's solidifying strength and power, you know, so, I don't know, look up those stones and see if they mean something to you, <laughs> see if they speak to you. Let's get started. So, my thinking for this reading was that I would start with, I have this tower takeover deck, which is every single card is a variation of the tower card. And the reason why I wanted to lead with this was because I feel like there are some things that need to be changed and shaken up, big or small. So when I go into this reading, I'm going to ask what things we need to be focusing on, really implementing change um, in the face of, you know, fear, in the face of worry, in the fierce, in the face of, in the fierce, <laughs> in, the, in the face of ferocity. Which areas do we need to bring fierceness into? So we'll start with that, and then I will clarify with some other tarot decks. I've got the classic Rider weight, um, the Light Sears deck, and my True Black, and then I have some Moon Witch oracles and, and Angel Answers oracles. So I'll try to make this pretty quick for you, as we're almost four minutes in. All right, Spirit, my higher self, and my viewer's higher self, thank you so much for using me as a channel to guide and instruct. Um, thank you for leading my viewer here today, and I hope that uh, I hope that this inspires them to find their own inner knowing and inner calling. And I just thank you for the opportunity to be here and read for them, as always. Um, you can do this yourself. I'm not claiming to be anything specific for anyone. So I believe that everyone can connect to spirit and that everyone can read tarot. And yeah, that's all in you. So it's okay to reach out sometimes, but you have everything you need in you. And that's okay. All right, here we go. Wow, the first thing that comes out is the magician, the number one, the initiation. That so some of us really need to step into embodying our manifestation, manifestations being here. Six of Cups. 
Yeah, because there's two versions of the Six of Cups for what we need to really be focusing on changing and addressing within our minds. So the Six of Cups talks about remembering things, the past, childhood. I feel like often we relive our memories and the way things used to be or the things that have happened and our ego uses that to sort of block us from experiencing the mental shift in manifesting. It, it reminds us that what we want, we don't have, right? So we need to be careful about that. Um, we need to be careful about how much time we spend in the past, how much time we spend embodying those feelings of what we've gone through before. Um, at, the, at the other end of that, because there's two sides to every coin here, at the other end of that, going into a childlike state of just wonder and accepting a world of miracles and just uh, possibility is also a wonderful way to address manifesting, okay? I'm also not a manifestation teacher, but this is just the message I'm getting, okay? I am not trying to be preachy by any means. <laughs> okay, let's see. Is there anything else that we need to be focused on for changing foundationally? Page of Pentacles. Five of Swords. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us, with the Ace of Pentacles on bottom, I feel like a lot of us um, can often reject new situations, new thoughts, new ideas because of the fear of inexperience, um, the fear of not being good enough to embark on new things, right? The intimidation that new situations bring. Um, and it's important that if we want to manifest new situations, new experiences, new states of being, that we are willing to confront our limiting beliefs in that area and also be willing to be a beginner and be excited about the opportunity to learn and expand and grow, right? Our ego often wants us to be the smartest and best. And that's, I feel like that is a personal thing for me also. Um, so we can often reject anything that can make us feel inferior. Okay, let's get some clarifiers. Okay. Okay, when we are focusing on fundamentally changing our viewpoint on manifestation, what are some things specifically related to that that we need to be really aware of right now? How is our memories, how is our limiting beliefs, how is all of that impacting things, and how will changing that be beneficial? The Three of Wands. So yeah, if we get caught up in this ego loop, this mind loop of reliving the past, of doubting our capabilities, of sort of rejecting any new opportunities and overthinking things, and we get stuck in a place of waiting with the Three of Wands. We get stuck in a place of waiting and kind of feeling like nothing's ever coming in. And with that experience, the Queen of Swords, with that experience, we can kind of become jaded and cut off from the heart because we don't want to get our hopes up about things falling through. So if we do this too much, then we become very analytical and very logic-based. And logic is wonderful, but it can also be what disconnects us from our desires and our heart and our intuition, okay? Um, we don't want to go too far into things just are the way that they are, right? Things are the way that they are now, but they don't have to always be. They don't have to always be. Look at that Queen of Cups and then the world that came out right after that. And this Queen of Swords is looking directly at this Queen of Cups. I feel like this is a personal message from within. So the Queen of Cups is obviously confront, or the Queen of Swords is confronting this Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups is just looking down at her cup. Okay, she's looking down, but the Queen of Swords is looking straight ahead like, why aren't you listening to me? And I feel like that is what can get us stuck, is like, 
if we reject our heart, if we reject our desires, our, our goals, then we lose touch of that. And I understand that you don't want to get completely lost in all of your emotions and you don't want to get completely lost in your heart the way that she's just not really seeing anything else around her as she's sitting here. But the integration of both head and heart is what's going to make for a successful uh, conclusion to this area of struggle, to this area of, of stagnation, okay? The Knight of Cups on bottom for that. So once we integrate both our head and heart, and we watch as our relationship with manifesting, I almost said manifestations and then manifesting at the same time, so manifesting. Once we integrate both of those, then it's much easier for us to see and accept new emotional offers, new emotional situations. Um, we also need to forgive ourselves and ask ourselves, you know, give ourselves an apology for the times that we have been misled. I just saw 11:22 on the clock for the times that we have misled ourselves. Um, yeah, we know that none of it's been on purpose. You know, we're all just doing our best here. So I hope that this doesn't ever come across as confrontational. integration is going to be happening with all of this mental spiritual confrontation going on <laughs> mental emotional spiritual confrontation on is going on what kind of things are we going to experience in the 3d what do we need to be aware of oh i see a card flipped over eight of cups so this didn't, I haven't even finished shuffling, but it flipped over as I was shuffling. So the things that we need to leave behind, when we think about it from the place that we've already been, it feels very sad, right? It feels very lonely and it feels almost like giving up. But the beautiful thing about the Eight of Cups is that it's going, it's moving past what you realize is not working for you. And it's this epiphany almost of knowing something else is going to work better for you. And you already know where it is and you already know the direction that you want to go. So leaving these thoughts behind, leaving a situation behind, leaving the emotional burden of your current mindset, whatever this means for you, leaving that behind is something that is going to bring a level of peace. She's walking away, I mean, barefoot in the sand. She's walking away, but she looks free. She looks free. And there's the sunrise in the, di in the distance. Or I guess it could be the sunset, maybe. How, however you interpret that, oh, sunset, the moon's on the bottom. <laughs> The moon's on the bottom. So that's okay. That means you walk towards the things that scare you, the things that you have hidden deep within you, right? The things that you reject about yourself. You confront those feelings. Okay, that wants to come out too. What is this? The moon again. Oh my gosh. The moon's like, leave me out. Come on. Bring me out. So, as we walk away in real life, we will be confronting all the fears, all the, the hidden emotions, the hidden um, aspects of ourself, of our personality that we keep buried deep within us. And that's really wonderful. There's two, there's two wolves in this picture, light and dark, yin and yang. It's finding the balance. 
saw the hermit on the bottom and the star. Okay. What other things are going to be presented in the 3D here for us to work through all of this for 8-8? Eight, eight. Lionsgate. Six of Swords. Wow, there's so much blue and green here. So much blue and green. I think it's important that as we are physically choosing to walk the walk and talk the talk, to actively choose in our daily lives, to live by what we want to experience, that we know that better times are coming that we know reprieve is on the horizon and that we trust the messages from our intuition, that we trust our own guidance, that we follow our hearts and just believe that better times are coming. Four of Pentacles and the wheel wanted to come out. Hmm. So I think in in real life we also need to be more aware of where we are spending our time, energy, and money. Okay? We need to be a little bit more disciplined with walking the walk and talking the talk. And luckily, being disciplined with yourself is what is going to open yourself to help shift your mindset into a more prosperous, abundant possibilities. I'm not wording that quite in the way that I want to. How am I trying to word this? If you walk the walk and talk the talk, if you set your boundaries and you respect yourself and you follow your heart, you follow your intuition, and you're not shaken by your fear or your ego around you, then opportunities will present themselves that will be abundant and in your favor. It's, it's a shifting of the karmic wheel. It's right time, right place. So you just have to trust that as you're leading yourself and you're guarding yourself and protecting yourself and I don't mean that in like a defensive way but that you are living by what you want to experience then you just know that the right timing is right around the corner the knight of pentacles is on the bottom <laughs> so the knight of pentacles can take some time and that I, I feel like that is a reflection of this three of wands under the manifest uh, the magician card. I feel like where our mind and our heart has been and how we have interacted in the 3D has put us in a place of things taking longer, right? And it feeling like it's never coming, but it is. And the good thing about confronting all of these limiting beliefs and within us is that once we do that and we, we do this Eight of Cups, we walk away from whatever we're fearing. We walk into a, a more abundant future and believing that things can be better. And we live like it's true. Then the things that come to us, although they may have taken a while, they are solid. They are secure. And it's he's very meticulous, this Knight of, this Knight of Pentacles. He is meticulous. So... Be meticulous. Be meticulous with where you are going, with what, what, with what you are desiring. I just see the Four of Wands at the bottom before I even go, and the Page of Wands. So, once you are really disciplined and practiced in implementing what you need to implement, it's not very long before you feel solid, where you feel stable, where you feel a fire. Um, a fire, a belief, a, a true knowing, uh, an, an internal conviction that what you want is 
yours, that what you what you want is real. And luckily that, that ignites this sort of um, childlike wonder and excitement to pursue it, okay? So it's worth, it's gonna be worth addressing all of this. So yeah, I guess this, <laughs> this deck wants to be future. That's what this one wants to be. That's what he wants to talk about. Okay. So right now we're in the stage of doing the hard work. Doing the hard changes. Doing the deep dives into our mind. And then implementing that outside of us as uncomfortable as it may be. And let's see. With that four of wands and page of wands, what is the future bringing? And how is this Lionsgate portal influencing that with all the necessary steps? Justice at the bottom. Finding the own, finding your own balance. Um, making things fair for yourself as far as what you're, what you're believing, what you're thinking, what you're speaking, and what you're doing. The world will just reflect that. Things will be fair. Things will be to you as you are to you <laughs> okay let's see page of pentacles and six of wands came out so you're going to be given way more opportunities to learn and implement these desires into actuality and that will bring such a sense of pride and joy and success and like, I've made it, okay? And what I love about this, what I love about this um, Six of Wands is it's a lion and this is the Lion's Gate portal. Okay. Oh, look at that the Queen of Swords came out again right after that six of wands so I feel like luckily this is success over the mind right it's self mastery it's mental mastery and it's learning to implement that that um, oh my gosh what am I trying to say so the Queen of Swords is very much this is how it is very cut and dry. I'm not, you know, going to waver on my stance basically unless it's very, um, oh my gosh, my words, I am not doing well. <laughs> That's okay. Because words don't really mean much to the queen of swords, right? Talk is cheap. Yeah. So luckily we'll be able to implement this side of us, this analytical, um, no shits given sort of cut and dry side of us, but for what benefits us, for what we're wanting, right? That will be implemented in a good way for the Six of Cups again. Wow. Yeah, the things that we are wanting, that we are reminiscing about, we will be able to implement those things. Um, in a positive way and not a self-sabotaging way. Let's see if there's anything else that wants to come through. Look at that beautiful nine of cups. That is peace. That is abundance. That is resting and just enjoying the fruits of hard emotional labor, really. Um, that's what's upcoming. All the success. It's very lavish. Not that I feel like lavish is necessarily a good thing, but it is a good thing. There's the sun, Leo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ace of Cups. Talk about being in a new, amazing emotional state. That is what everyone wants. Follow that white dove, you know? I love it. Okay, 
I'm going to get you a Moon Witch Oracle or a couple of them. We'll see how many come out. These just have little short things that could be helpful or beneficial to you. Okay. What do we need to know from this Oracle deck? Freya, you are worthy. You are loved. It's important that we embody these affirmations and these knowings. So it's not just saying the words. The words are great. And we start by saying the words when we're affirming. But the next step is embodying. It's implementing in the 3D these words that we say to ourselves. You may have a connection with Freya. Huh. That looks like... That looks like a female lioness at her feet. Sorry, let me go there. It's kind of hard to see, but... You are worthy to have your... <laughs> Isis? Let's see. Cast spells, protect, heal. Yeah. If you're into spell work, that would be beneficial. Mirror, mirror. The beauty you see in me is a reflection of you. That's exactly what I said at the beginning of this reading. I said, oh, what did I say exactly? I don't remember. Not exactly that, but you don't need me. You have the ability in you. Yes. Um, mirror, mirror work, mirror gazing might be beneficial for you right now. Waxing Gibbeous. It's okay to change the direction. Yeah. No matter how far you strain you 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 stray, not not strain. Interesting. Strain. Yeah, this feel this this journey, life in general, but especially manifesting, can feel so straining. <laughs> but no matter how far you stray, you can always get right back. It, you're, you're not going to inhibit anything from coming to you as long as you get back on track. So that's when I say, like, forgive yourself for where you've been with the Knight of Cups being, like, kind of an apology. Forgive yourself. Apologize to yourself. Not in a way that, like, beats you up, right? But in a way that allows yourself to move forward, right? Right? magic wand focus your energy on one thing yeah we can get all frazzled for sure I would I would make that one thing being a strict mental diet right being um, correct self-correcting course correcting whenever our mind can tend to go into our fears, go into our anxiety. When our mind can view the 3D as absolute and not something that is ever changing. Okay. Let's see. Get some angel answers cards. Okay, so for this, if you want to ask a question, I always do the ask questions on my on my shorts here on YouTube, but if you want to ask a question, I will just shuffle this a few more times. And I will just really wait for when I think the timing is right and I'll get some cards and we'll hopefully get an answer for you. I will also give my own interpretations of the messages as if they weren't answers. So, um, yeah, let's see. Go ahead, think of, an, think of a question and when you're ready, ask it, okay? deck into three parts and then I will get the answer so go ahead and ask if you haven't already and if you have already thank you for your patience here we go let's get your answer all right success what's funny is that eights are all about in infinity success 
and power. I love that success came out for Lion's King. So that's obviously a yes, right? Don't stop and compromise. So this is where I feel like no matter what your mind says, what your ego says, self-correct, course correct, and compromise what you think is absolutely true and ask yourself in those moments of fear, in those moments of insecurity, is what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling necessarily true? And maybe it's true in the moment, but is it necessarily permanent? And I guarantee most of the time you're going to say, no, it's not necessarily permanent. And then you ask yourself, what would I be thinking and feeling and experience if I was already on the other side of this issue, right? If I was already past this, if I already had what I want, if this wasn't even a thought anymore, what would that be like? And embody that feeling, get right back into course correcting. Also, don't try to control how things happen for you with compromise. Just trust that because you want it and you've embodied it and you accept that this is your reality and this is happening for you, that this is 100% going to be, or it is your reality, right? It's what you're going to experience. Don't cut, don't try to control how it happens. Just trust that it's going to happen. And I know that's very difficult and this is definitely like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like this is the choir preaching to the preacher right now. <laughs> like, I struggle with all of this too, so I, please, yeah, I, I feel you. Okay. Okay. Unlikely and in the near future came out. So, unlikely in the near future. That doesn't sound great, right? That's what I mean whenever I say try to compromise and not control how things happen because if you're trying to control how things play out, then there's still a level of fear and a level of needing to control, right? Um, that is blocking things from unfolding the way that they want to unfold for you. So it's being, that's being in a lack mindset, right? Needing it right now, needing it immediately, needing it in 30 seconds, needing it in the next hour, whatever it means. Wanting the instant gratification is not looking at the long term, right? And that when we're manifesting, we want to be looking at the long term. Okay. And again, I, I'm, I'm right here with you. Okay. <laughs> Ask your angels and yes came out. So I feel like that is just another message of saying, release that control, right? Trust that things outside of you are working in your favor, okay? Because they are. And you can call on your angels, you can call on your guides. A year from now also just came out. So, you know, that may not be what a lot of us want to hear, trust at the bottom. But think back a year ago. Think of where you are now compared to a year ago. Think of some time in your life when you looked back and you're like, wow, that was a year ago. That's where you'll be. It feels like it's a lot now and it feels like it's so far away, but that's a lack mindset. That's a fear mindset. That's a, I need to feel it now because I'm worried that I'm not going to have it, that I'm not worthy of having it. And I need to feel like that now, but you got to train yourself to feel worthy of it even if it's not physically here and just trust that things are working out, that they are absolutely on their way to you. And when you look back, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that was a year ago. A year ago from, from today, 8-8. 8, -8. <laughs> 8, -8 2024 
2024 concludes to 8. So 888. Eight, eight. That's amazing. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up because it's already been half an hour. So if you have stuck around with me this far, I hope that this was really beneficial for you. And thank you for being here with me. And thank you for giving me the honor of reading for you. I really love doing this. If you found anything beneficial, reach out. I would love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I love you. Have a great lion's gate. <laughs> Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and embody the feeling of the affirmations that resonate with you. I feel grateful and excited that what I desire is already mine. I know I can trust that everything will unfold in the most miraculous way. I love choosing to embody the feeling of it is done. I am the creator of my reality and I wield that responsibility with conviction. I see the world through a lens of hope and possibility. If my ego chooses doubt through logic, I remember that crazier things have happened and always will. I am always receiving my desires with ease and grace. <laughs>